Right, here I am with Matt Jackson, who's our most uh, recent addition to the uh, Grays and Chubb Carp Academy. And today we're going to talk about your most memorable session. I know you've had a few over the years from various waters down south, so do you want to talk about one? Well, I'd say my most memorable at the moment was one that was fairly recent. It was um, in the spring this year, and I managed to bag two 45 pound plus carp from this country. Um, so I went for a walk around the lake and just in the hope of seeing some signs of fish and lo and behold on the complete opposite bank where there were no other anglers whatsoever there was an absolute stack full of fish. Really? So I thought happy days. So I quickly got the car, got round there, got set up in the swim and it was quite hot and they're cruising around. So I thought rather than straight on top of them. So this, this was early April was it? Mid April? It was. Uh, yeah, It was the first real bit of hot sun we'd had. Yeah, so the carp were absolutely lovely. Yeah. So, oh, right, okay. so they're up and about and rather than disturb them I thought I'd leave them to it, sit back and so no other anglers saw what I was doing either. I was just sort of enjoying the sun really, sunbathing, yeah. not really fishing so I wasn't drawing attention to myself or the fish and then come the evening I got the rod sorted and by the morning the wind had completely turned and the area of flat calm water was no longer flat calm and right. it was now northerly straight into my face which didn't yeah. really strike me as the most perfect conditions not considering the day before was hot sunny and the carp were there so I was unsure if the carp were even still there. Mm. By about nine o'clock, nothing had happened, and I was starting to worry big time then. But then one of the rods took off quite fast, and I leant into a nice 20 pound mirror. So I thought, right, there's maybe some fish still That's about. Good start. So, got the pictures done, slipped that fish back, and then literally, as I'm phoning the mate to tell him that I've just caught one, another rod's gone, and it was a 25 pound common. I thought, oh, brilliant, there's well, definitely it's still fish about. here and saying that this isn't the easiest water in the world, is it? No, quite, not at all. Quite large with, with quite low stock, so, yeah. you know, a couple of fish over the course of the season is not a bad little result, so two in the morning or two in, what, an hour or so? Yeah, well, literally, maybe even less than an nice. hour, half an hour probably. So. And that indicates there's probably a good number of fish still on me, so I thought, brilliant. Got the rods redone, sat back, and then maybe a bit longer, an hour and a bit later, I've had another take, mm. lent into it, and immediately you could feel it was a better fish. It would just stay deep, plodding around, and I thought I might well have something special on. All the big ones were due out at that point, none of them had been out, so it was quite a tense moment. Nice. I got it to the net, and I've immediately recognised it. It's got um, a big scale just dropped on its um, back line, and I knew which fish it was, and it had been out in the autumn at 48 pound, so I thought nice. this is going to be a real big one. Could have been bigger, could be slightly smaller. Yeah. So I slipped the net under it, and it turned out, I think it was 45, 8. Nice. So, yeah. Well, you, you know, obviously a little bit down in weight, but you're not going to knock a... Oh, no, not at all. And it's one of my favourite carp, that one, as well. It's yeah. a real character, and it fights so hard. It's, it doesn't go off quickly, but when it turns and moves, it goes where it wants. So there's no control in it. It's a really good fish. And I've, I've seen pictures of that one as well. It's, 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 not, it's fair to say it's not a particularly scaly fish, but it's got no. nice proportions and it's nice yeah. dark colours. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, lovely colour into it. So you've managed three fish in the morning. Three fish in the morning, yeah two 25 pounders and a 45 so i mean that's pretty much my spring made already i yeah, thought cool. if you can get a 45 pounder really in a year you're, yeah. so you're quite a happy carper so Definitely. to get one in the morning yeah and, and then what happened you, you sort of fished on for a little while did you and yeah i fished on for the rest of the day but obviously I've drawn a little bit of attention to myself, you know, when you catch three fish like that, everybody's turning around, they want to know what's happened, so... It's, the, it's, 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 it's worth pointing out that it's not really a quiet water, is it? No, it's not. It's a busy lake anyway, and it's recto or square in shape, so everybody can see what's going on. There's no hiding away, you can't keep your captors quiet, everybody's seeing. So there were swims either side of me and to the right hand bank free. All of those are full of anglers. Everybody's casting and spawning 130, 150 yards and it just became an absolute bombardment of leads and spots. Uh, okay. So with that you know, it's big square, all the fish have gone straight back to the middle and I'm left twiddling my thumbs again, yeah. so. So that, that, well, that, that completely... That pretty fish, much it? killed it for then. I did see a couple of fish the next morning, but longer and sort of more, not in my water, a bit further over. So I thought that's my chance well and truly gone. But fortunately for me, I can fish the Sunday nights as well. Yeah. So I think I caught the fish maybe Friday morning, so I had a, a day and a night with nothing, and then the Sunday I got a chance to remove. Yeah. And I could see where the fish were showing. They were showing in the centre again. 
So I moved slightly up the bank to a swim that gives you most of the centre of the lake. If you've got a big enough cast, you can get out to where the fish were showing. So I settled in there, and because the fish responded so well to the bait the previous couple of days, I thought I'd give them a really good hit. So I put right. out maybe four kilos of boily mixed with sort of pellets and other stuff Richard, as well. just for one night's fishing? Yeah, just for one night, because oh, I thought if I can right. recreate that, I know yeah. it's a bit of a gamble, but I yeah. had three fish in the morning. Yeah. I thought if they're hungry yeah. and I put that bait out again, I could catch another three fish, you that's know, it. aim high and see what happens. Oh, fantastic. That's, that's, like I said before, that's especially sort of brave of you, such, because it's been such a long winter up until that point, and I, you know, I think I'm right in saying that winter had only really just sort of ended a couple of weeks yeah, before. And and yeah, literally, I think the first fish came out a couple of weeks previous. Yeah. So, yeah. Boat's causing a bit of disturbance, but uh, anyway. So, you move swims. Yeah, um, move swims. Uh, I got baited up ready for the evening. I got all three rods out on the same spot. So, I thought if I get a bream during the night or a carp, rather than try and because I've only got one night, rather than spook the swim, recasting five ounce leads, 150 odd yards, I thought it's one rod against the bivvy yeah. and see what happens. Nothing happened through the night, but in the morning, I saw a couple of fish sort of poke their nose out just on first light. And with that, one of the rods pulled up tight and dropped back. There's a lot of bream in there, so I immediately yeah. thought any drop back has got to be a bream. So yeah. I picked the rod up, wound down to it, wound in a small amount of slack, and with the braid, when it goes slack, it really is slack. So yeah, I thought, yeah. is there anything there? Is there a bream? Yeah. And then with that, I've connected with something that's just turned and powered off, and it's oh, gone yeah. off like so fast, it was just stripping the clutch with the stiff rod and the braid. It was just going and going. Fantastic. You can't beat that when you think you've got a, a bream attached and then yeah. you wind oh, yeah. down and something just powers off. Like, and it was oh, gone. That's more like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, properly. So I started to regain a bit of control, got it nearer the bank, sort of expecting to see an angry 30 pounder really. The way it's gone off on that initial run, I thought it's probably not too big. And then when I've slipped it over the neck cord, I could just see a lifted scale behind its gill plate. And that's a fish, another one of the real big ones in the lake. And I remember seeing a picture of somebody else with it in the autumn at 50 pound with that lifted scale behind its gill plate. So immediately I knew it was another big one. Fantastic. And, yeah. and we hoisted it out, got it on the scales, and it turned out 45.4, I think it was. Big old kipper. Yeah. So yeah, mate, that's, that's an absolutely phenomenal session, two mid 40s, isn't it? Yeah. What, a day and a half of each other, something yep. like that? Brilliant session, mate, fantastic. So. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that, I don't think. No, 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 no. Nah. I'd, uh, I'd love to have a couple of fish like that, so, especially from here. You know, it's, it's, it's hard going, and, and especially from down there. Yeah, it's got a few big fish, but not many of them show themselves. And am I no. right in saying that those are the only two captures of that fish so far this year? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's been out twice. Yeah. Oh, it has. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic, mate. Good result. To, yeah. Thanks for sharing that with us, fella. Excellent.